Welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh. And I'm Chad. Now, if you guys have noticed recently, we've had a lot more painted planes than we've ever had in the history of flight tests, and that's because of this gentleman right here, Chad Lewis. Now, uh, you've been with us for about, what, uh, about six months now? A year? Yeah, it's about that. Wow. He's been with us a long time, and he's done extraordinary projects like just recently the Death Star, mm -hmm. the Battle Blimp, the Kraken. There's just so <laughs> many. The Falker Track Plane <laughs> and the, the SE5s. Uh, long story short, uh, we've added a whole other chapter of really finishing airplanes, and what we want to do is we want to show you some techniques that you can do the same to really get a really high finish look. Uh, first, we'll start with a like the strongest uh, paint we can get, which is usually a rust-oleum. They're really like bitey paints. They just uh, they adhere really well to the foam. Make sure when you put your paint down, put nice light coats on, let it dry very well before you put the next coats. Once you get your base coat down, this is where the airbrush comes in. Yep. And speaking of airbrushes, there's a couple different types of airbrushes that you're going to want to look at. Uh, what are those two? Uh, first you have single action and dual action. Yep. Single action is where the uh, airflow actually siphons out of the uh, paint jar and actually lots of disperse. Uh, what's dual action? Dual action is when you have control of the, the air and the paint. Now one thing's for certain, we are not experts with airbrushing. We actually go to a lot of YouTube videos to watch them on the techniques and tips and tricks. We're going to put just a few down below that you can go to to watch on how to dial in your gun, how to use the, the fluid, the air, the pressure, the distance. Uh, practice on a scrap piece of paper before moving on to your model. Definitely. Two specific techniques we're going to show you is how to do distress panel lines and also how to do false rib lines on our older vintage airplanes. Now for this step, you're not using solid or opaque, right? No, I'm actually using a transparent paint. So as long as you do a nice thin coat, part of the color of the paint that's underneath it will show through it. One way is to use a straight edge. This is just a piece of uh, cardstock. And then I made some lines um, where the ribs would be, the tops of them. And then you'll come down, just kind of line up the line and just start up on the top and just do a nice little dust across one edge. Now it doesn't, it shows really bright at the beginning, but when it dries, it becomes a little darker. So you're actually aiming your nozzle up closer to the paper, not actually on the on the wing itself, right? Yeah, you just want about half the nozzle's width to catch on the other side. And it's a very, very fine mist. You don't want it to be too strong. Because in a sense, you're not actually, this isn't actually paint that was on a plane. This was a shadow. Now for this is just one side of the shadow. And in the other side of the shadow, it wouldn't be directly on the other side of it. It would actually just be a touch off. So you just kind of start off and then just get a nice little shadow and go across it. And for the bottoms, there was just a little bit as well. So what are we going to be doing with this? Uh, this is going to be doing the paneling like it's on the Kraken. Okay. So the idea is to make it look like a real old school um, airplane wing. So you're going to put in the rivets and the like the oil stains of yeah. the plane itself. Yeah, planes didn't stay pristine for long. They got dirty and grungy and no one ever washed them during the war. So we're going to make it look tired. Yep. All right, so you got a center punch and a steel roller. Yep. Um, the center punch, you just want to make sure it has like a nice rounded surface so it doesn't crack through the foam. And then steel roller is does exactly that. It makes stuff straight. So you can decide if you want it to have it on the front edge or going straight up but usually I just go straight back on them. Um, instead of going straight down, that'll crack the foam. You roll it on the back edge of it. So you just kind of want to make this nice little dent. It's not very deep and it's it's not going to harm the yeah, integrity the of yeah. the foam. Yeah, this is just something you really want to practice with before you actually put it on the, your real plane because it's really easy to uh, to mess up and make it yeah. not look so good. Yeah, practice on a couple panels, see what looks right for you. Yeah. All right, so you're going to be scoring some lines. Yeah. So you'll just go in and it doesn't really matter where you put them. Um, one thing that me and you have both found out is don't put too many. <laughs> yeah, if you do a lot, you have a lot of work ahead of yourself. Yeah, so it's simple enough. You don't want to have perfect straight lines off across the whole thing because that's not how the planes were designed. They were designed with small panels all across the plane. And they're all staggered too. Yep, to actually make it stronger. Yeah, and you could even like run across the leading edge. If you have, yep. say, a leading edge detail, you can put that in as well. Yeah, so these are the gaps between the panels. Now you have to put the rivets for the panels. And it's using the same punch. And you just go in, and instead of pushing straight down, you just kind of roll it back and forth of where you think they would be. And you just keep doing that as, uh, as much or as little as you want to. 
thing I like about this is because on some of the ones that you push deeper, it looks like they kind of have a little stress cracks going around yep. it. Yep, and you can also put cracks in if you want to and kind of like run them across the edge to make them look like they, uh, they got messed up during it yeah. or it was like a, uh, like a really fast repair. Yeah. Now this is also really cool too. If you have say like a warbird and you want to see like bullet holes, you can yep. do this as well for bullet holes. Just kind of make them different and then definitely put the, the, the stress cracks around it, right? Yep. Okay, now that we're done with that, we can go on to the paint style. Use a just a regular black paint, but make sure it's water-based because you are going to wipe like 90% of it off again. Now, if you're doing this in a place like your kitchen table, obviously put like down cloths yeah. and make sure- Not if I just don't do it in the kitchen, do it in your garage. Yeah. Airbrush paint is not as hazardous as spray paint, but still be in a very well ventilated area. Yeah. And this, we don't need to be really um, precise on it. You can put a lot on because you want to get down every little crack. Now, what are a couple key techniques? You're going to put it down, but when you wipe this off, you're going to be thinking airflow, airflow right? Over the yeah. wings? Yeah. And uh, that's not like, you can rub most of it off and then give that texture. Oh, good. Okay. okay. So we'll just go in and we'll make sure it's all in these little cracks. Okay, now that you've put like a lot of paint, so like it'll it'll smudge and smear really, really well right now. So you're gonna come in with your your air, um, paper towel mm -hmm. and just kind of rub most of it off. Now, even though that a lot of it's still on, it's not a big deal. And since it is a water-based paint, all you have to do is just add a little bit of water to, just not too much, you don't want it to puddle up, you just wanna damp the cloth and you don't wanna rub back over it again. And then of course you get to switch over to a clean one and then, yep, there you go. So this is really good for like a heavy weather, but if you yeah. wanna just kinda of get it back on the panel as you need to take more off, what do you do? Yeah, um, you use something a little bit more uh, stronger in a sense. Okay. Um, something with a little bit more bite. So I'm using acetone or you can even use alcohol as well. Um, and then you rub it on. Now this will in a sense melt the paint underneath. So you just don't want to put too much of it on. Yeah. I can't stress enough, practice on a panel. So that's basically if you just want to kind of get it weathered down in there and make it look dirty here. Yeah. All right, so to recap here, you basically, what, you, you, you make your scores, mm -hmm. you make your rivets. Yep. And then you uh, puddle up a paint. Yep, and just put a bunch on um, and wipe most of it off. And as always, use scrap foam, practice it, yep. get some panels, you're gonna learn different techniques, and also different ways of doing it is gonna give you a different effect. Now these are some really easy uh, techniques that you can use that you can practice on scrap foam with, uh, but there's also other things you can do with tape, like what you just recently did with the Death Star. Yeah, you just make sure you use a low tack painter's tape, mm -hmm. and you can go over top of um, an existing paint, so on the Death Star it was a lighter paint on the bottom, so I masked the entire thing off, and then I spray a little bit of darker paint on top. And that'll give you things like panel lines, shadows, distress, things like yep. that. Friends, we want to say thank you for watching. These are just a couple spray techniques that we use to really make the planes look beautiful. Uh, we hope that you do the same as well too. And really, you know, take pride in not only building and flying, but also the journey in between, which is Definitely. finishing as well. Yeah. Cool. We'll see you next time.